For those of you guys who actually made it this far in the video, I have a surprise for you. We found a Wii at the Goodwill Bins today. Is there going to be a game inside? I don't know. Stay tuned to find out. Anyways, welcome back to another episode of the Resell My Way to AK series, where I go to thrift stores and garage sales. And I try to turn $50 into $8,000 in order to pay off my student loans. What is going on, you guys? Today, we're at the Goodwill Bins again, also known as the Goodwill Outlet Store. And we've actually had a ton of new viewers recently on the channel. I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Aris, and I'm a full-time college student, and I'm a part-time reseller. I go to places like thrift stores like the Goodwill Bins buy stuff for really really cheap and sell on platforms such as eBay, Amazon, or Mercari. We currently have a budget of $70 but we're actually going to subtract $20 for gasoline and my girlfriend Emma actually just texted me and said they're doing a switch of the bins inside. Sealed DVD. Oh here's some nice shoes. Wow look at these. Fresh pair of New Balances, we'll pick these up. Are these Jordans? Oh shoot, are these Jordans? Oh shoot, look at these. I have a feeling that these might be really, really expensive. And then we got some fresh pair of Nike Air Maxes over here. Oh man, these are sick. New Balance, New Balances. Maybe I'll just put these three in my cart since there's no matching pair here. And then try to find them later. American Eagle. Wait, these have a really interesting pattern. I'll honestly pick these up. What's, oh shoot, Phillies hat, new era, fitted, we'll snag that. What's this? South Pole, New Balances. These kind of look like the other ones I just got. These are nice. Yeah, they're in great shape. Wait, why is there an N on one side but not an N on the other? Did it come out or something or is that just how it's meant to be? Um, what are these? Dr. Scholl's, these could be good. I don't know, I guess I'll pick them up and then Polo, I'm guessing these are Polo Ralph Lauren, right? Or Lauren Ralph Lauren, I think these are just Polos. These are sick too, I'm definitely gonna pick these up. Wow, the shoes, usually you find single shoes here, not matches, but this is incredible. And then I also just found these, which are pretty fresh, but these ones have a hole in it, big, big pilling. I don't know, just a lot of pilling. I'm just not gonna pick it up. And then off camera, I just actually found the matching pair to one of these New Balance shoes. And I also picked up a Nautica hat, a Herschel hat, and this like Sonoma visor. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. So some pretty nice finds. Oh shoot, these actually have a hole. I think these would have been good though. They're the 1540 V3s, but I'm going to have to pass because of this hole. Why is someone passing on this? A sealed puzzle? Science or magic tricks with physics. It's brand new sealed. This could be worth something. And then look, there's actually another one right here. This is another puzzle, Hua Dada. This one's probably not worth anything, but it's still interesting. Oh, and take a look at that sealed CD. Wait, hold on, is that Wii Sports? There's no way. Another copy. Are we serious? This is like, I found this last time too. This is in great shape. So two sealed puzzles and Wii Sports, let's go. Wow, these are like rag dolls or something. Yeah, they're kind of wet though, that's gross. I feel like they might be expensive. TI-30 calculator, these aren't worth that much. The TI-84s are the ones to look out for. Green grenade valve caps. That's kind of interesting. Uh, camera, Kodak. I don't know what this is exactly. It might be worth something. Probably isn't though, but we'll pick it up. I love bins like this because there's just like so much nostalgia and you just never know what you're gonna find inside of them. Like cool old Disney puzzle. Um, what's this? Rolodex. This kind of looks like an NES game, but it's obviously not. It kind of looks like it opens. Let's see what this thing is. Rolodex. Huh. This kind of looks like it might be or something. It's pretty interesting. Toss into the cart for now. Like, this is what I'm talking about. A brand new sealed deck of cards. If you guys didn't know, I actually used to do magic tricks back in high school. Back in my woodshop class, every Friday I would actually do a magic trick at the beginning of the class. Um, yeah, guess that's something about me. Let's go guys. So I found the one shoe earlier, and then I think someone else found this, but tossed it back into the bin. So I just found the matching pair for this guy. These seem to be in fantastic condition. All right guys, so I haven't looked these up yet, and we're actually gonna go ahead and look these up together. So let's go ahead and see what the style code is. If you guys didn't know, there's a nine digit style code inside of Nikes that you can look up. 554724 064. 
$500 brand new pre-owned and these are size 9 and a half 9.5 100, 150, 190 best offer, 60 best offer. These are at least a $60 shoe. This is insane. I just think that these are so cool because they have a red Nike swoosh on the one side and then a blue Nike swoosh on the other side. And then obviously, you know, Air Jordan. These are really good. I just gotta clean them up a little bit. But wow, what an awesome find. I just looked up this puzzle and it's only going for around 15 free shipping. And it's kind of heavy, so I'm going to pass on this guy. These are still throwing me off. And these New Balance Absorbs, I don't get why there's no New Balance logo on this, on the one side. It kind of is just really throwing me off. But I think we did really well. We got a ton of great shoes today. And I usually don't find shoes, let alone matching pairs of shoes. I cannot make this up, guys. A brand new sealed copy of these sports. Another one. I can tell it's brand new. I just saw this with, like, Nintendo booklets and, like, empty games. But I guess someone didn't know that there was an actual game in this. Let's go guys, $25.82 for all of this stuff. So after this, my girlfriend Emma and I decided to take a quick little pit stop at Wendy's and I spent $5 on food. When I went back inside of the bins, I actually found this bookshelf filled with video games. So these were all brand new video games that just got put out. However, they were individually marked, but I did find a ton of great stuff. A Wii for $15, few video games that I ended up picking out. And I'm just so excited to find video games because you don't find video games that often at the bins, but clearly here I'm killing it and I can't wait to share the values with all this stuff. Also guys, all right. So I know I'm clearly prepping the camera up right now, kind of struggling. Is there a game inside? is there not a game inside always one of the best feelings when there is is there one yes let's go guys which one is it we sports resort let's freaking go all right guys so we just spent the rest of our money on all of this stuff right here it came out to 21 dollars and i was able to get a wii controller for three dollars with the nunchuck and it's got the wii motion plus so this is worth around 25 dollars we sports uh sorry not we sports uh new super mario bros got it for one dollar they honor the one dollar price instead of the two dollar price you guys already know how much this game is worth it's got nca football 11 animal crossing city folk complete with manual all the games for a dollar i got the wii manual someone actually found this in the bin and gave it to me while I was paying up at the register, which was really nice of them. Oh, uh, the black nunchuck that's with this controller. And then I paid $15 for the Wii, and I actually opened this up inside, as you guys previously saw in the video, and there was Wii Sports Resort inside of this. So yeah, we just spent the rest of our money. So let's go home, and then let's go over everything else that I got today. Hey guys, so Emma and I just got back from the bins, and I absolutely killed it today even though we're literally broke right now and have zero dollars left into the fund i'm just gonna go over everything i would put everything nicely organized but the trunk is still filled with stuff to list emma has stuff to list over there so yeah we have a lot to go through but i actually eventually found out that one of these Wii Sports is actually brand new sealed. I didn't know how much this was going for at the time, but I looked it up and this is selling for $50 brand new sealed. So this was insane fine. Probably have like 25 to 50 cents into this. So that's like a $45 profit. So that's insane. We picked up new Super Mario Bros as well. This should be another 15 bucks in profit. NCAA Football 11 should be $10 in profit. Animal Crossing City folks should actually be $15 back into the fund. So then these are two different pairs of new balances. I would say we should be able to get at least $25 $30 each. This is all conservative too. A uh, new era fitted Phillies hat. This should go for like at least 10. Herschel hat. American Eagle jeans or pants, whatever you want to call them. They're like 10 to 15 bucks. And then obviously we also found the used copy of Wii Sports. That's another 15. We picked up the Wii, so this should be around like $30 as is. It did power on, but there was the game inside, which is also worth an additional 15 bucks because it had uh, Wii Sports Resort inside of it. We also picked up the Wii Motion Plus, or not a Wii Motion Plus controller, but it basically a black control and nunchuck with the additional Wii Motion Plus thing and this should go for around 25 bucks. Then we also picked up this pair of Polo Ralph Lauren boots. I think these are like a woman's boots and I should be able to get like 30 to 40 dollars for them. And then this was probably the best find of the day, second to the brand new sealed Wii Sports, but these Jordans, I'm assuming they're real, just need a little bit of a cleanup and they should be worth around like 80 to 100 bucks. Oh my gosh, and I'm literally covering stuff. I also found this puzzle, I think that's worth around like 20 bucks. And then underneath the hats, I found the camera. If it works, I'll put batteries in it and test it out. It should be around 15. Picked up the Rolodex or whatever. That should be around like 15 to 20 bucks as well. Then we picked up these Air Maxes. I'm assuming like 25 to 30 dollars. I haven't even looked these up yet. Uh, Dr. Scholl's. The only reason why I picked these up is because they're literally like, like new. So I should be able to get 20 to 25 bucks for them. These are just the matching pairs of the New Balances that I showed you up here from, from before 
from uh, before I can't speak and then uh, I also picked up these pair of Nikes that should go for like $25 as well so overall an insane haul for the day so I just added everything up and conservatively I think I should be able to make around $500 today so that's an absolutely insane haul and I just got to get to listing for those of you guys who actually made it this far in the video I have a surprise for you so I'm actually gonna go ahead and reward one of you guys for watching my videos so this is a complete in box or complete in cardboard sleeve we sports so the reason why I'm giving this away is because I wanted to give back and I found several copies of this game absolutely nostalgic love this game even if you don't want to keep it for personal use you can guys can go ahead and resell it so if you guys want to actually go ahead and win this all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to this channel like this video and I actually want you guys to answer this question so basically my question is what got you into reselling and was there a hardship in your life that actually led you down that path so I know it's kind of a deep question but basically that's exactly what happened to me and my reselling journey and how it all started so the resell my way to AK series actually starts like a long way back. You have to go back to when I was 16 years old, basically. So all of my life, I have pursued a professional soccer career. So I thought I was going to make it pro. I have played overseas in countries such as Colombia, Germany. I've even played down in Washington, D.C. So here's the story. When I was 16 years old, I actually left to go live with my grandparents in Colombia, and I ended up playing for the professional academy, the U-17s, for America de Cali, which is a Colombian soccer team. Honestly, living in Colombia, you know, like, I was on my own a lot. Like, it was really, really scary. Like, it basically forced me to mature super duper fast. It, like, it just changed me. It changed my life. It was a dangerous place, you know? Like, I wouldn't walk down the street with my phone out. Like, you, like here in the U.S., you could literally walk anywhere with your phone out. Not, I shouldn't say anywhere, but in most places, and you would feel safe with your phone out. But yeah, in Colombia, like, I felt like if I wanted to keep my phone, like, I would never bring my phone out or keep it hidden, like, tucked in, like, a back pocket or something. If I ever wanted to bring extra money with me, I'd only have a little bit of money in my wallet just in case if someone robbed me, and I would put extra money actually into my shoes. Also, one of my friends on his way to training got robbed at gunpoint. He was basically walking to training, and some guy came up to him, and he was like, give me your phone. And Man, this shocked me. If uh, any normal person, any sane person is going to go ahead and basically give your phone, give everything up. He basically hid his phone deep into his lunchbox. And basically the guy actually never found it because it was in some hidden compartment in his lunchbox after checking it. But he did rob him for whatever he had, like his shoes or something like that. But from that moment on, I basically knew that I was not going to be able to stay in Colombia and, you know, play soccer, you know, the sport that I love. So I had to come back here and I had to figure out what I was going to do. So when I got back here to the U.S., I was trying to figure out a way where to go, what to do. And there was this guy named Christian. He basically was like an agent to me. He wasn't like an official agent, but he was aspiring to be. And he helped me out so much. I am so grateful for this guy. And he actually got me a trial for the U23 DC United team. So for an MLS team, keep in mind, I'm 17 years old. I ended up making it on the U7 or on the U23 team for DC United. And it was awesome. Like it was an awesome experience. Like our locker room was literally in the DC United stadium. Overall though, it ended up not being for me, but you know, my dream was gonna live on it, it does it didn't stop there i was never gonna give up so christian again once again he found me something else to do basically there was this scouting like competition kind of thing going on in new york city there was probably two to three hundred other people there ton of different people ton of different ages like some were young like me but majority of the guys were like let's just say 22 to 30s like 22 to early 30s and they all wanted to go pro everyone had the same dream that i did and so with this being said i actually ended up being like one of like four or five people i, I was the absolute youngest wanted to get scouted to go ahead and actually go to Germany. I was 17 years old at the time and I was basically asked to leave to Germany that weekend. But I went ahead and basically lived on my own with some older guys like as roommates in Germany. And when I was in Germany, man, that experience was absolutely crazy. So I started off in sixth division. I can't even remember what team I went on trial for at first. So I ended up going down to third division for this team called uh, Tus Hortel. And then I also went down the second division, got a trial with Eintracht Dortmund. I know this might not interest you guys, but if you want to go ahead, listen to me, my experience, uh, I really, I really appreciate it. I love sharing it. So anyways, if we go back to the story, when I was trying out with Eintracht uh, Dortmund, the players on the team loved me. I absolutely did well in trials. I thought I killed it but I just did not fit the coach's needs. If I'm being honest, I also think that not being able to speak any German, it basically didn't help me at all. Like I felt like the coach was someone who like needed to very much be direct, guide you. And that's just how he was. And I have no disrespect with the coach, but even if it had nothing to do with that and I just wasn't a part of a system, that's what happens in life sometimes. You just got to keep going. So I ended up going back to the third division team and keep training with them. One of the funny things with me not speaking German is that it literally took me one month to learn what left and right was. I remember the coach was like obvious because they don't pronounce their R's there in Germany. He was like, obvious, 
Links, Rex, links, Rex basically means left and right. One month. Yeah, I was getting yelled at links and Rex one month. And finally, it finally clicked left and right. But anyways, that's besides the point. So basically, I went back to the third division team, got an offer. It wasn't that much. It was only like a few hundred bucks like every single week. But I honestly had to decline. The reason being is because I didn't want to lose my eligibility to play in the NCAA. I'm not sure if the rule still applies. But basically, back then, if you were to receive any professional offer and make money off of the sport that you're playing, you were not eligible to receive a scholarship to go ahead and play Division One, Division Two, basically any NCAA sport. So I decided to decline and... I basically ran out of time in the transfer window. In soccer, it's kind of like an NBA or NFL trade deadline. Like you can't sign players beyond a certain point. It was like the end of August and I didn't have anything sorted. So I basically had to go back home to the US. And when I went back home into the US, I was trying to figure out where I was going to play, which colleges I might be looking out to and going. And basically there was this team called PDA or Player Development Academy in New Jersey. And the reason why I wanted to play with these guys over anywhere else, like even DC United is because they had four guys on the national team for my age group. I was able to get a trial with them and unfortunately, when I was in the trial, I shattered my ACL and I shattered my MCL. I had a full ACL tear. They removed 40% of my meniscus and I was just not able to... Um, yeah, I wasn't able to play. They told me I was going to be out for about a year. So then fast forwarding like a month or two, I had my surgery. Everything went well, or according to the doctors, all my surgeries went well. And I started physical therapy gradually. And then after about three one months, I was basically jogging and doing like ladder drills. And the, it was like so weird because like I was able to do the drills, like the agility drills, but I really wasn't able to like feel my leg in a sense. Like it just, it didn't feel normal. So at this point, I thought I was en route to an excellent recovery. And what happened was that my insurance at the time, because I wasn't doing it with any professional soccer team, they weren't taking care of me, it was all through my own health insurance, and they actually decided to reject any further physical therapies. And it ended up going two months, two months for them to finally give me like two or three denials. And my parents said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and pay out of pocket for your individual physical therapy sessions. My parents, God bless them, thank them so much. They ended up paying $50 per th physical therapy session. And I would be going like once or twice every single week. After like seven or eight months, I was driving to physical therapy, normal day, driving as normal. I decided to take one to two steps out of my car and I just simply was not able to walk. I could not walk. I have no idea what happened until this day the doctors don't even know what happened. I basically was in bed not being able to move for around six to eight weeks after that and I felt like I needed to start the whole recovery physical therapy session all over again. So I kept doing it, went back physical therapy for a few months. So basically I felt like I was able to walk again and be normal and I stopped physical therapy. But at this time I really didn't fully give up hope that I was not going to be a professional soccer player again. So what I tried to do was I called colleges around and I ended up speaking to an old coach of mine. This is for the college that I'm actually attending to now. And I was like, hey coach, like, is there any way I can receive a scholarship? Because I like tore my ACL and everything, but I think I'm going to be able to play next year. Like, can you please give me a scholarship? Coach basically said to me, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm not able to give you a scholarship, but like, how are your grades? Like, are they, are they good enough? Like, are, are you going to be able to receive like any sort of academic scholarship? So all of my life, I've always been an advocate of school. So no matter what happened, no matter where I was playing, no matter how many hours, six days of training every single week, I always focused on school. I was always a good student, top like 15% of my class. That's not to brag. It's just that I know I always like advocated for like doing my schoolwork and making sure I was on top of everything just in case as a backup plan if soccer didn't end up working out. So I ended up receiving a $15,000 academic scholarship based off of my high school grades. So I'm so thankful that I always prioritized um, academics as well as soccer all my life. And that's something that I would definitely advise to anyone who's younger or basically to anyone like in general, always have a backup plan because you never know what's going to happen. And on top of that, I was able to receive uh, grants and additional scholarships. And I basically don't owe that much for college. That's why I only have $8,000 worth of student loan debt. Took out $4,500 my first year, $3,500 uh, worth of loans my second year. Last two years have basically been free. So yeah, that's where this whole resell my way to 8K series starts from. It starts from the fact that I ended up thinking that I was going to be a professional soccer player all my life. But yeah, basically I got into reselling because I needed another outlet. But anyways, that's how this whole resell my way to AK series came about. I hope you guys enjoyed my story. I would definitely love to hear about yours. It's not just about giving something away. Yeah, I love giving something away, but I am intrigued to hear about my subscribers and what they're actually interested in. Also, before I forget, I remember talking to you guys about cleaning some hats in the last episode. I haven't actually gone ahead and cleaned them yet, but I'll make sure to clean them and show you guys them next episode. 
episode. And I'll let you guys know if cleaning hats in the washer machine actually works. Also at the start of next week's episode, I'll go ahead and share all the items that have sold. And I'll go ahead and give you an update on how many listings we actually have in the series. If you guys haven't already seen the last episode of the Resell My Way to 8K series, go ahead and watch it. I'll definitely link it right here. And I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day. Peace.